By the way, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, it's the perfect time for you to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell para laging updated sa latest uploads ko. So today, I'm gonna teach you about the module 1 of our lesson which is about force and motion. So, at the end of the lesson, you will be able to answer the following questions. First, do all forces result in motion? Second, what are the conditions for an object to stay at rest, to keep moving at constant velocity, or to move with increasing velocity? Third, how is a force related to acceleration? In your grade 7, you describe an object's motion in terms of displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration. Then you were also introduced to non-uniform motion where the object covers unequal distances or displacements at equal intervals of time. Most of the motions we come across in our daily life are non-uniform, and the primary cause of changes in motion is force. Now in this module, you will learn about the effects of force on motion, Newton's three laws of motion as the central organizing principle of classical mechanics will be presented and applied to real-life situations. By the way, class, can an object move by itself? Definitely no. But what makes it move then? Okay, we call it force. Now, what is force? So basically, force is a push or pull of an object. As mentioned, force is a push or pull of an object. So, meaning pushing or pulling an object may result to motion. So, meaning motion is a change in the position of an object over time. Now, take note of the word change in the position. But, how do we really know if an object has moved? Okay, we may use a reference points. For example, you push your newly bought refrigerator from your door towards your kitchen. So your reference point is your door. So basically, the object being pushed has been displaced. And that is motion. Another example is that you walk 3 kilometers from home to school. So definitely, there is a displacement. There is a change in the position. So that is motion. Okay, class, moving on. My next question would be, can more than one force act on an object at the same time? Definitely, yes. Like, for example, we have a book on the table. If you notice, the book is at rest. But it doesn't really mean that there are no forces acting on it. In fact, we have two forces here. The first one is the force used by the table to push the book upward. We call it normal force. The second force here is the force due to gravity that pushes down the book. And that force is called gravitational force. Now, the total combination of forces acting on an object is called the net force. 